friends, it's Miss Sussman here with our Friday art activity. Today we are doing something called op art. Anytime you hear the word optic, O-P-T-I-C, that has to do with your eyes. So op art is art that creates an optical illusion or it plays a trick on your eyes. Um, so I have two activities I want us to do today. I'm gonna get you started on both of them and then you can finish them on your own. And as you get finished, I would love to see your finished products. If you wanna email them to me or send them to me through Class Dojo or send them to your teacher, then they can um, forward it on to me as well. So you'll need two pieces of paper. And if you have some kind of cover paper to keep from working on the table that would be awesome I know your mom and dad would appreciate that or a tablecloth or a placemat or just a bigger piece of paper to go under it you also need a pencil and something to color with I recommend markers for this you don't have to use markers but you can if you would like to okay so for this first activity I'm actually going to or drawing I'm going to turn my paper so that it is vertical so vertical is up and down I'm going to be drawing with a sharpie right now I'd recommend you draw with a pencil to begin with, and that way if you make a mistake or you make a mark you don't like, you can erase it. And then you can go back over it later with Sharpie if you decide that's what you want to do. Um, you'll see I have my paper here. This white paper is what I'm drawing on, and there's like a cream color paper. That's my background so I don't mark on my table. You're going to start by making a wavy line. It can be anywhere on your paper, anywhere you want it to be. Then make another wavy line. And then you can look and see if you wanna make another wavy line somewhere or if you like it, how it is. I might make, I'm gonna make another one over here. I think I'm gonna make another one right here. Okay, then once you have some wavy lines on here, you're gonna pick a section. It can be any of these you want to do. And you're gonna start this first step of this with either just your pencil or just your Sharpie if your parents said you can use a Sharpie. But when you're doing this, um, you're going to slowly be tracing the line beside it. So these are almost like parallel lines, two lines that are the same, going the same direction. I'm just gonna very slowly and if you want to start making it look like the line is moving, these lines up here, you want to get closer together. And then the drops in the line, you start exaggerating them, making them a little bit further apart. And then when it comes up, put it closer together. When it drops down, let it come further apart. And then closer together and keep going like that. I'm gonna back it up a little bit. So you're just gonna continue that close together here, drop it a little bit, bring it up here closer together, bring it down and drop it. And if you don't like every mark you make, like I don't love that right there, it's okay. I'm just gonna keep on going with what I got. Start close, drop it, bring it back up. So this first part of this project is all about lines. So take a minute and start drawing out your lines in your first section of this. And when you get down to places like this, then you can just go in there and draw the shape as if it was there same here or the line as if it was there and when you see when you kind of step back from that it looks oh my papers really are moving but it looks like your lines are kind of moving so this one I trace what's called the contour it's like the outline of the line you can also go inside and create a different type of line so this one's a really big section maybe I don't want to do the whole thing the same so I could do a um a wavy line in here. You can start breaking up your sections. Okay, now I got those. I'm gonna start making them get closer and closer together. The closer it gets to the tip of this. 
This is something I started doing when I was in high school. It really helped me relax. It was good on days where I was stressed or maybe even I was just tired or I just needed a brain break. Op art was something I started doing a long time ago. I have lots of sketchbooks full of these types of things, okay? So there you can see that, how it starts to make it look like it's moving. That looks almost like ramen noodles. It starts to look like it's moving. But so you just start playing around with this how close and how far apart the lines they are, working in parallel lines. I could come in here and I could add a whole different type of line if I wanted to. And behind, so it looks like this is going behind those lines like that. You can leave this in just the pencil like you have it, or you can make it if you want it to color this in. Sometimes I will go back and I'll color in, like maybe I would color in every other line here, or I might even just go color it in with colors. I could use Sharpies, markers, crayons, color pencil, anything. You can, again, leave it black and white, or you can color it. It's gonna to be totally up to you what you decide to do with this, but it's meant to be the type of op art that makes it look like the lines are moving Makes it look like they're stacked in front of each other, but also meant to be a relaxing kind of art. I don't want this to be stressful for you, okay? It's meant to be something very relaxing for okay, you. This other drawing we're gonna do today is a different type of op art. And I'm gonna do this one with my paper horizontal. For either of these projects, it doesn't matter whether your paper is horizontal or vertical. That's totally up to you. I'm just showing you the two, two different ways you could do it. For this one, if you have a ruler, you could use it. You don't have to. I don't like to get Sharpie on mine. Um, so I'm not going to use my ruler, but you could use your ruler like this and draw lines across here, but I'm just going to draw straight on here with my Sharpie. You draw with your pencil, make your lines as straight as you can. All right, my camera's getting kind of blurry. Make them as straight as you can going up and down. So up and down lines are vertical lines, which I know you guys all know that. So you're gonna fill your paper with lines, vertical lines like that. I might want one more here. And again, mine aren't perfectly straight. If I had used a ruler, I could have put them, lined up my ruler and gotten them really straight. If you want your lines really straight, by all means, make them really straight. That's totally up to you. Okay, once your paper's filled with lines, now you're gonna add some shapes. These shapes can be anything you want them to be but they need to be 2d shapes so it needs to be things like circles squares triangles hearts you could do a cloud or a flower shape but just nothing that has interior detail and nothing that has um, three dimensions to it like a cube or a rectangular prism so it needs to be flat shapes 2d shapes so i'm going to do a circle a triangle a heart and a square. You could, before you draw your shapes, you could do your name in bubble letters if you wanted to do your name. Um, you could do a word, like if you wanted to write hello, it would just need to be in bubble letters, not um, just straight letters, it would need to be in bubble letters, okay? So you're gonna draw this out. Now, if you have a Sharpie and you're allowed to use Sharpies, or you need to ask your parents permission to use a Sharpie, I would recommend tracing your lines with Sharpie now so that um, you can really see these marks when you go to start your coloring. But do not use a Sharpie unless your mom and dad know that you're doing it and you have their permission to use it on this paper, okay? All right, next, I'm going to start coloring. You want to choose two colors that have a lot of contrast. Contrast is something that in art we use to help things stand out against one another. So you might use something bright next to something dull, something light next to something dark. Um, but for this project, if you don't use colors with contrast, the optical illusion part of this does not work. So if I use this dark blue next to black, or if I used blue next to a dark purple that looks very similar, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in my colors. So you wanna get two colors that contrast. So I have blue and hot pink are the colors I'm gonna use. So what you're going to do, you're gonna start with coloring your first shape. It can be any of them. It doesn't matter which one you decide to make your first shape. I'm starting here just because I like to start from left to right. 
you're going to color your shape in an AB pattern. Every time you hit a line, you'll change the color. So right here, I'm going to color my blue. I'm going to color neatly and carefully. I am not scribbling. I always like to do the outside like I'm doing here. And then I go back and color the middle. I kind of like to give myself a barrier to keep from scribbling my paper. So I'm filling in all the white spaces, just like that. So um, I would recommend marker for this. If crayons are what you have, you could even paint this if you had the type of paper you could paint on. Um, but markers or paint are gonna give you the best color. Marker gives you the best control, but you could still use crayons or color pencils as well. But here's what I mean about outlining it. I like to outline the area I'm gonna color in. That gives me a buffer so I don't color outside the lines. So I did my blue A, now my pink is my B. Again, I'm coloring neatly, carefully. I'm not going outside that buffer I have there. I'm gonna color in. Oop, I went outside my line. Filling in this whole thing. You don't need to get in a hurry, just like the other drawing, the other op art thing we were doing. This is meant to be relaxing, kind of give you a brain break. It might be something you work on multiple times in a row. You may not get it all finished at one time. Um, and that's okay. You just do what you can do. So I did my A, I did my B. Now I'm doing my A again. I'm not going to keep coloring this because I think you guys understand what to do. I'm just going to do that right there. You're going to color much more nicely than what I'm doing. Now what you do, after you've, after you've colored your shape, your A, B, A, B, then you're going to, you're not going to color any other shapes just yet. You're going to start with your background because this is going to help you keep your pattern. The pattern is what makes this optical illusion work. This is also a time where it's really important you have that paper behind your paper so you're not coloring on your table. So where I had my blue, now behind it, I'm coloring pink. And that, because I picked two colors that have good contrast to one another, they're really going to stand out against each other. My pink marker is getting kind of tired. I think it needs a break. Okay, so there, I'm coloring in all my white spots, filling in neatly carefully. This one's kind of hard. I have tape right there on my paper. It's kind of hard to color in. But you notice that I tell you guys all the time about coloring in. You see how much you can notice those um, spots you don't color in? That's why I always say it's so important to color in those white spots because you can really, really see them. If you don't, they really stand out really badly. Okay, so there's my B, my pink. So now I need A to go in my next column behind my pink coloring right here. Oh no, I colored into my circle, but that's okay. It's all right. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna color in, but I'm running into my triangle here. My triangle is not gonna be blue. I'm gonna color around this tip of my triangle. like this and then my triangle tip right there is going to be pink just like you would imagine it would see right there when i'm talking about those white spaces you really gotta color those in neatly and carefully don't get in a hurry we're home we're not going anywhere take your time do some coloring let your brain relax you could even do this while you're um, watching tv or watching family movie night um, you could do this anytime you want to. So there's that one. And then this little tip right here would be pink. There you go. 
And then you'll just keep going now in this pattern. So this will be pink, blue, blue, pink, pink, blue, blue, pink, like that. All the way down until your paper is colored in all the way, okay? All right, so when you guys get finished, I want to see those finished products. I'm gonna keep working on mine. I don't have it finished yet, but I'm gonna keep working on mine and I will share mine when I get mine finished and then I wanna see yours when you get yours finished, okay? Have a great day, friends. Bye.